is Dr. Thomas Abraham in the room. All right, fantastic. So I think we are ready to begin, folks. Again, thank you very much for coming back. I apologize for a little bit of delay, but this is for our own good. Trust me, you'll see in a minute why. Without further uh, delay, uh, I would like to actually invite Dr. Thomas Abraham. And when I do that, let me introduce him by two of his positions that he holds, which are relevant for us. Dr. Abraham, to begin with, is the national president of an organization called GOPIO. The sign should be somewhere over here. It says, Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, one of the oldest Indian American organizations. But today I want to also introduce him in his current role as a board of governor of AAUC. And I want to thank him for the tireless work he has done over the last many years in building AAUC, but more importantly also bringing people like me and building the organization. And uh, I would also like to thank him for the work he has put together in many of the committees, but especially relevant for tonight, the awards committee. So I would like to hand it over to Dr. Abraham to say a few words and then make important award announcements for some of the people that we are about to recognize tonight. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Oh, that's not enough. Good evening. Thank you. I think you are in a festive mood after doing a whole day conferences and yesterday of course we had the reception it's a good networking people had opportunity to meet people from different parts of the country i just want to make one correction about uh, my title i am the chairman of the global organization of people of indian origin it is it we have a gopio america but we are in 35 countries with 100 chapters it was started in 1989 in new york city uh, when there was a lot of discrimination and human rights violation of Indian people worldwide. Within 10 years, we could manage to get all these issues of Indians, uh, Indian diaspora in different parts of the world, particularly in the Caribbean countries, in, uh, um, in Guyana, in Trinidad, and in Fiji also, South Africa, apartheid. But now we are going forward to see how to build up the diaspora and work with other communities. And when, when Dr. S.K. Law called me in 2018 to come for a meeting in Alaska, I said that is the best thing to happen. I've been involved in the community for 50 years. When President Carter announced the Asian American Week in 1979, we put together a Asian American setup in New York, including Chinatown Planning Council, OCA, and several other groups, and we were actively involved. But the problem with our community groups of each our community is that we have our own agenda, things did not go forward, many people tried many times to build up a national coalition, but did not fly. It started one or two years later, it falls up. Similarly, even within the Democratic Party or Republican Party, coalitions came and went. But the Alaska meeting, which was basically initiated by Dr. S. K. Lowe, I want to give her a big, uh, for this initiative, big thanks to Dr. S. K. Lowe. We came together in 2019, a constitution was adopted. And then 2020, I was given the responsibility to conduct the election. So it's a democratic organization. We have brought all the communities together. While we discuss all these issues uh, in our conferences and all, we also want to have a good time in the evening. And I suggested that uh, we need to have an awards dinner. It all started when Mr. Rajiv Singh wrote a note about three months back or four months back that it was the birthday of Norman Mineta. And he said we should celebrate his legacy. 
So I went a step further. I said, he has provided a lot of public service. He was a secretary, I think it is transportation, and many other positions in California, in the federal level. So I suggested that let us do a big event, the dinner, when we all get together to have some awards category. So we decided that we will have Norman Mineta Award for Public Service. And the first Asian American congressman is Dilip Singh Song, as early as 1952. So we decided that we will have a Dilip Singh Song, Song Award for Political Leadership. Then we wanted to recognize somebody who has contributed a great deal among the Asian community for, the, as a, for charitable purposes. So we have decided to have one award and another award for community service. And then we also thought we want to include the younger generation. So we also decided a category called President's Award for Young Professional Achievement. So we are going to make this presentation. To make this presentation today, may I request President of AIUC, Dr. S.K. Law, to come to the stage. Dr. S.K. Law. We cannot have this event without the sponsorship, very generous sponsorship from CLUSA. So first, I'd like to uh, recognize that. Uh, so may I have uh, Mr. Sandy Chow to come up here to receive a certificate that we <laughs> generated. Thank you very much. Can I also invite uh, Andy Lee and Anthony Ng to come up here to represent CLUSA? Angela, you please come. May I request uh, you come into this side? Exchange, exchange, exchange. You come. Can you? I will read it. Certificate of sponsorship presented to presented on September 13, 2022. CLU USA, Asian American Unit, Unity Coalition, deeply appreciates your work for National Civic Leadership Forum 2022. Signed, Dr. Scalo. to say a few words? Well, division of labor is very important. Okay, somebody have to go out and work hard uh, to get the gasoline. So therefore, uh, the vehicle can move. And the vehicle is run by Andy and Anthony. Without them, <coughs> we will go not go very far. So therefore, basically, this is really a joint effort. But however, what we try to get is look for the right organization to actually expand the Asian American <coughs> activities and uni unification and everything. So therefore, we're so glad that we found AAUC and then uh, we're really very, very happy to see the efforts, and then we see the <clears throat> everybody coming here with one goal is to advance a Asian <clears throat> American Islanders uh, advance in this society. Uh, we thank AUC so much. Thank you. Can you please do Uh, may I request uh, a Papa representative? A Papa representative? Who is uh, Marshall. Marshall, please? Who is the photographer? We have the photographer here. 
may I request a photographer to come down here in the further? <laughs> The next one is CACC. Can you wait here? We are going to have a group photo of all the sponsors. Okay, sure. Um, CACC of Minnesota, any representative? Next one is SK and Sing Law Sing. Where, where are you? Sing. Please come. Thank you for your support. Thank you. We forgot Mamie. We forgot Mamie. May I request Mamie to join here? Mamie? Thank you for joining. <laughs> Oh, Mimi, okay. I think that's all we have yes, today, sir. yes. Sandy Chow, maybe she can send a messenger. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are all our supporters for sponsors for this, uh, the whole AAUC NCLF convention. Be a big hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we also have made uh, some special award tonight. The first award is to be given to um, the name of the award is Dalip Singh Song, who is uh, another trailblazer. He's the first congressman representing, um, and we would like to have, uh, because uh, this is given to uh, Representative uh, Pramila, um, Pamela, uh, Pramila, uh, Japal, sorry, Pramila Japal. Uh, so he, she is very busy at the Congress, so she's not able to come today, but we would like to present it uh, to her in her office uh, later this year or some other time. And um, Angela here lives in DC, so she is going to represent uh, Pramila to accept this award. Thank you. I'm sure Pamela wants to say thank you to everyone. So let's give Pamela Jepal, our elected official, a round of applause. Thank you. Our next award is uh, named after Norman Minata. Um, he is, this is for the, uh, for the Public Service Award and we would like to give it to <laughs> Ms. Um, Millie Tom because she's really deserving that award from us. Congratulations. I have to tell you that uh, in my 40 or maybe closer to 50 years in politics, this award is very special because I stand on this man's shoulders to be who I am today. He is probably the closest person we have to our own Martin Luther King. For all that Norman Mineta stood for, 
I am so honored and I so thank AAUC for giving me the first Norman Manetta Award, which by the way, I will be sharing with the Norman Manetta family. Thank you so much. Our next award is uh, for the Philanthropist of the Year for, um, for AAUC. So we would like to recognize Mr. Sandy Chow, who is not only giving us the money, but also giving us the heart and also the care that he really care about our organization. And I know he donated to many organizations around the country as well. So we definitely would like to recognize him as the philanthropist of the year. Sandy, your second speech. <laughs> All right, throughout my life, uh, I have a lot of friends. And then I said, uh, <clears throat> I, I kind of forget about my fellow people, and then I, I encourage them to do it. And a lot of time it says, okay, wait until I make so much money that I do it. Or wait until I achieve certain goal, I do it. End up, they never do it. If you want to really do good work, you have to start when you have that conviction. It's always good when you start when you're young. That will give you a lot of practice when you do something wrong, and then you correct it. Then you can do it better. When I was first uh, <clears throat> working in the area of helping each other, I always, at the very beginning, looking for the most underprivileged, the poorest, and then the unattended and ignored people. And then as time goes on, a lot of people will start doing that. Then I find out the most, the, the so most impact, if you really want to invest your energy to, is really trying to find the top talent that would dedicate it to solve problem for the society. And that, when I made that switch, that I find a lot of people working on the, <clears throat> the grassroots side, but top down is very difficult because there's so much temptation and so much glory and so much self-interest. But if you can find people unselfish and dedicated to lead and with their intelligence, and I will say that would be my best reward. And in this audience, I saw almost all of you. All of you had a lot of success on your own, but you dedicated also to the cause of betterment of human being, but betterment of the country United States and betterment of your own ethnic group that united, that we really, really advanced. So this is what I, I can see when, to, when coming to this meeting, I saw all of you, and then with cheerfulness, with intelligence, with compassion, and everything, I, I, was, I was so happy that I think the Asian Americans will have hope, the United States have hope, and the whole globe will have hope. I really am very, very honored and then be among this group, and thank you very much. Our next award is uh, the Community Service Award, which we have recognized that many, many organizations are doing extremely well and servicing their communities. So today we just selected uh, CAL, stand for Coalition for Asian American Leaders. Guess where they are from? Minnesota. So I would like to invite all the CAL 
leaders to come up for, with me. Uh, thank you so much to be here. And we have um, Jen, Jen uh, Shui, correct? Mm -hmm. And then um, Nuchi Nuchi Wang. And I'd like to also have uh, Kai Ying. I know you have just left them, but you have been with part of them a lot. And I'd like to invite you to come up here too as well. No, it's fine. Please, you are the friends. So. One second. Other one is You come in the middle. You come in the middle. Who are you giving the one? Oh, you come in alone. You come in the middle. Okay. All right. You come to the other side. Can we go over? Okay, you want to say something? Good evening, everyone. I just want to say I am so blessed to be in a room filled with so much talent, intelligence, power, and so many Asians, right? Asians are in the house tonight. Woo! So I am so excited to be here tonight and have felt empowered these past couple of days by all of our speakers and panelists to continue being an active participant in social justice and civic engagement work. Be a boat rocker, show up, be a shaker, be a mover. My name is Nuchi Vang. I am the new incoming policy director, policy and advocacy director at the Coalition of Asian American Leaders, AKA CAL. Our um, executive and network director, Tao Mei Zhang, she's unable to attend tonight, but she asked us to share some remarks. So first, I want to say thank you so much to AAUC President S.K. Lowe, and thank you to the chairman of the awards committee, Dr. Thomas Abraham, for recognizing Cal's endless work to harness collective power to improve the lives of community by connecting learning, and acting together in Minnesota and across the country. Cal is a cross-ethnic, cross-sector, cross-generational coalition with over 5,000 network leaders energized to ensure our visibility and our voice of Asian Americans. We are very honored to be recognized and to receive the Community Service Award from the Asian American Unity Coalition. I will now pass it over to my amazing and powerhouse colleague to say a few more remarks. Thank you again. Thank you, Nitri, and thank you again for the award. Um, I actually wanted to share a little story. I was introduced to Cal actually as a community member um, who was seeking support and help for an injustice that occurred in my own family. Um, see, about five years ago, Immigration Customs and Enforcement, or ICE, uh, detained and almost deported my husband to Cambodia. And at the time, there was this ICE raid of Cambodians all over the US uh, for deportations. And through community support and guidance, um, as we've heard, the justice and immigration systems were extremely complex. It took a lot for me, um, you know, a lot of time uh, with mentors to really teach me and help me understand those systems. And I was able to understand that the political, or the personal is political. I understood my power within these systems and the power we held as a collective community of family members, community members, and allies. This empowered me to co-find uh, a nationally recognized campaign called Release Minnesota 8 and win the freedom of my husband. And so Cal, especially you, Kaying, took the extra step and invested in me and my leadership. And so now I'm the senior manager for civic power at Cal 
and have been leading our immigration work since 2019. Um, and Cal is dedicated to our Asian Minnesotan community, and we've recently did a listening tour throughout the state of Minnesota, listening to community concerns, providing information and resources, building deep relationships, and of course, investing in leaders. And Kaying, thank you so much for the countless hours that you have spent with me investing in me. And so I urge you to either start or to, to continue investing in leaders, especially those who are deeply impacted by the issues that we're fighting for, and invest in organizations that work directly with communities to fight for justice, and invest in a process of building deep relationships to harness collective power. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have the final award. Uh, may I request Dr. Scalo again? The final award goes to the President's Award for the Young People for, <laughs> for the, yeah, I know, presented to the, the Young Asian American Pacific Islander. Uh, this year we have selected Vivek Pandik and we'd like him to come up and he's a very impressive guy at his young age. He appeared in the TED Talks as well as started a Gen Z uh, called We Are Gen Z. So i like to you welcome Vivek. And he gets the biggest trophy, by the way. <laughs> Vivek? Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, and thank you all for uh, bringing, this, bringing everyone together during their busy lives. I know that this has been um, an incredible conference. Um, congratulations to all the other awardees, uh, to the organizers, and to everyone here for your time. Um, one of my favorite parts today actually was how much the youth was emphasized today. So uh, several panelists, several people have come up and talked to me. Um, shout out to the youth sitting at that table over there. We had a youth conference the other day. So it's been a fantastic time. Um, I just want to say a few words. So I think one of the main things that I wanted to talk about was what makes our generation so special, so unique, and, and why it's time to initiate the youth into leadership positions here at AAUC. And I had found uh, an article. It was written in 1951 by the Time magazine. And they had written, the most startling fact about the younger generation is its silence. With some rare exceptions, youth are nowhere near the rostrum. The younger generation is still in a small flame. It does not issue manifestos, make speeches, or carry posters. It has been called the silent generation. Well, I don't know how many of you might have kids that are in my generation, but you know we're not silent. You know we like to fight back. You know that we like to connect with people from all over the world. And the one thing that I've realized with all my work with Gen Z, whether it's been through my podcast and interviewing Gen Z authors, politicians, working with a Gen Z founded company, um, and someone over here mentioned it earlier today, the biggest lesson that I learned with our generation, it is very safe to hope in this country. And I know a lot of times in media, our generation's portrayed as entitled, maybe we lack a little respect, Sometimes they think we complain a little too much, but I do know that our generation has recognized the power of hoping and we have become optimists. And we are optimistic not because we can't accept reality, but because we've accepted reality and accepted that we can do something about it. And I know again that our generation, because they, we think we know everything and we can do things very quickly and fast, we argue with our elders, and we try to break a lot of long-lasting traditions. And a message that I want the youth and the adults all in this room to understand is that we must keep disagreeing, but we must keep listening. We need to use disagreement as a vehicle for innovation, progress, and ultimately to heal a radically polarized nation by building a deep sense of unity. We can no longer fear disagreeing amongst each other and amongst generations. We need to embrace it, we need to learn from it, and we need to have a genuine interest to replace our desire to be right 
with the joy of learning what is true. And when we learn to find unity through disagreement, assess solutions from contrary perspectives, and leverage technology to spark efficient change, our generation will finally be the generation that finds a way to move forward, not as Asians, not as Americans, but as humans. And to the youth, it is our time to lead, but it is also our time to listen and to reflect. And to the adult, it is time to pass the baton, but it is also your time to teach and to trust. Thank you all for this incredible award. I'm genuinely humbled, and I'm excited to be the change we wish to see. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. May I, at this time, may I request all the awardees to come forward with your award here in the front? All awards for a group photo. Sandy. All right, now to celebrate this be stay there, not at over. Party, party time is coming soon. May I request everybody to come here on the top, and some of you can come in the in the front. Everybody join for a group photo. This will be our our uh, our main photo, which will appear in all the websites, all the social media. Everybody join join for a come in the in the top. Everybody come. Everyone come for a group photo. Please do come. Just take for a... And those who can sit down, kneel down, please kneel down. Okay, everybody come up. Now it is party time. May I give it to Rajiv? Party time. Okay. 